All right, so for two, we talked about the unit circle. We filled in our unit circle, which you'll do tomorrow, okay? Um, I'll, after I go through the warm-up, we'll go through a review of what we talked about and how to fill it and some tricks and stuff like that. But tomorrow, you'll get that unit circle quiz, blank unit circle. You'll fill it in for a quiz grade. All right, and then we talked about how to use the unit circle. So the first number one says find the point x, y on the unit circle that corresponds to the real number t, then find the sine, cosine, and tangent. So number one says seven pi over six. There's two ways to look at that. One is this would be on your unit circle. So if you fill out your unit circle correctly, right? We know that over six, the point values for every over six would be root three over two and one half. And then if you look at the seven pi over six, which is the one that where the numerator is one more than the denominator, that's gonna be in your third quadrant, right? What are the positive negative signs there? They're both negative, right? So this would be negative root 3 over 2. And negative, well, actually, let me break that off to the side. Negative root 3 over 2 and negative 1 half. So when it asks for the, the sine, the cosine, and the tangent, the sine would be the y coordinate, negative 1 half. The cosine would be the x coordinate, negative root 3 over 2. And then the tangent is going to be negative one half over negative root three over two. Keep change flip. They're both negative. The root the twos cancel, and I get one over root three, which rationalizes to root three over three. Questions on that one? Very good. All right. Then we get to two. We've got eleven pi over three. Is eleven pi over three on your unit circle? No, so even with your unit circle in front of you, it's not, you're gonna have to use the application of it, right? Which is most likely what you're gonna see if I'm giving you back your unit circle. You're not gonna get a question that's directly on it. So 11 pi over three in a mixed number format would be what? What's 11 divided by three? Three and two thirds, okay? So we talked about this last week, that if I wanted to go around till I found three, you could. This would be zero pi, that would be one pi, this would be two pi, this would be three pi. So that's my kind of starting point. And then I wanna look at the fraction part of my mixed number and see if it's bigger than a half or less than a half. So is two thirds bigger than a half or less than a half? Bigger, so if it was smaller, I'd stay in this first quadrant that I'd hit after the three. But because it's bigger, I'm crossing into the second quadrant which tells me that I'm at an over three in which the point would be one half and root three over two, but I'm at an over three in the fourth quadrant in which X is positive and Y is negative. You with me so far on that? Yeah, okay. So then my sine is negative root three over two, the cosine is one half, and the tangent is now root three over two divided by one half. One's negative, one's positive, so my answer's gonna be negative. Keep change flip and I get negative root three. SD. But you also subtract. Like what I did, I just took two pi. Sure. Yeah, you can find you can subtract two pi to find the coterminal angle and use it. That's fine. It's just that sometimes you might have to do it a bunch of times, and it might be faster yeah, to do yeah. it this way. But you can definitely do both. Yep. All right. Now number three says use the value of the trig function to evaluate the indicated functions. This is your based on your even and odd. So we talked about even functions and odd functions, and cosine and secant are the only two even functions, which means that if I change the sign on the angle, if I make the angle go from positive to negative, when I do that with, sine, with cosine and secant, the value of your trig function does not change signs. So if it started positive, it stays positive. If it started negative, it stays negative. Every other trig function is odd, in which if you change the sign on your angle, it changes the sign on your trig function. So having said that, if I had sine of t of four is equals to four fifths, what would be sine of negative t? Negative four fifths, okay? The only ones that don't change are cosine and secant. Now, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, and this is a positive t, so I'm gonna come back to the original one and just flip it and get five fourths. If it was a negative t, it'd be negative five fourths. Good on those, yes? Yeah, so the calculator comes into play here, right? So use the calculator to find the following functions and then round to four decimal places. So the first one says secant of four pi over seven. The second one says cotangent 35 degrees. The very first thing you have to look at is, is it in radians or is it in degrees? So the first one is in what? Which means your calculator has to be in radians. So on a graphing calculator, you hit the mode button 
and you go to the fourth line and you make sure that radian is highlighted. Everybody's got that, right? Because otherwise you get answers and they're wrong and you don't know they're wrong. They look good, but they're wrong and you've lost credit because if there's no partial credit, I can't give you partial credit on something I can't see you doing on your calculator. So be careful. Then I would say, okay, where's my secant button? Do you have a secant button on your calculator? No, you have to put secant in terms of sine, cosine, or tangent, and secant is what? Good. So this would be 1 over the cosine of 4 pi over 7, and you type it in exactly like that. 1 divided by the cosine, 4 pi divided by 7, and I get negative 4.494. Oops, four decimal places. Negative 4.4939, which still rounds to four zero. Cotangent of 35 degrees, what mode is that in? Degrees, so you gotta be comfortable flipping back and forth, that's how your test is gonna work. And cotangent, tangent, I mean cotangent's not on there, so I do one over the tangent of 35 degrees. So if you leave it in radians and you type it in as 35 degrees, it will automatically change the mode for you if you wanted to do it that way. But if you just switch your mode to degrees, you can type it in as tangent 35 and you don't need the degree symbol. How do you know if it's in? You gotta go to your mode. Should we keep it in radians? Ah, you're gonna flip back and forth. And if you reset your calculator, it automatically goes back to radians. So just be careful if you ever like clear your memory, it goes back to radians. You're going to see when we get to right triangle trig, you're going to need degrees usually for word problems. Yeah. But with this stuff, you're going to need radians. So you're going to flip back and forth. That's going to be the, the, you know, one of the things you got to get used to is flipping back and forth. Questions on the warm up. Okay, so then unit circle. I'm just going to review some of the tips that we talked about. We're not going to fill it all the way in, right? The quadrant angles, we, we want to definitely know 0, 90 degrees, 180, 270. And then we finish off with 360. And then what was the pattern for the angles in between? 30, 15, 15, 30. So I add 30, I add 15, I add 15, I add 30. Everybody's good on that, right? And then we did radians. So this was zero, this is pi over two, this is pi, this is three pi over two, and we finish it off with two pi. What was the trick for the radians in the quadrants? What are all the angles closest to the x-axis? Over, over six, right? All the ones closest to the y-axis were? Over three. over three and in between? Over, over four, good. And then in the first quadrant, we leave the, the numerator as pi. So it's pi over six, pi over four, pi over three. In the second quadrant, what do we do with the, the numerator? It's one less, good, one less than the denominator. In the third quadrant, one more. And in the fourth quadrant, it's either, good, times two minus one, one less than double, or Save yourself that trouble and memorize five, seven, eleven. Oh. Yep. So the, when you do the actual like degrees, it's uh, 30, 15, 15, 30. Correct, all the way around. Yep. And then every over six has the point root three over two and one half. Every over four has the point root two over two and root two over two. And every over three is one half and root three over two. And then the quadrant points, you're moving to the right one. So this is one, zero, up one, this is zero, one. Left one, negative one, zero, and down one, zero, negative one. And then you'd fill in all your points. And in that first quadrant, they are both positive. In the second quadrant, the x is negative, the y is positive. In the third quadrant, they are both negative. And in the fourth quadrant, the x is positive, the y is negative. And you wanna go ahead and adjust your points to have those signs. Questions? 
So if you don't have it unlocked and you're spending some time this evening going back through, there's remember there's a digital one on, the, on Canvas, okay? Download it, do it as many times as you need to to make sure that you can get 100 on that quiz. That should be an easy 100. Any questions on the homework? All right, so four or three is right triangle trig. So for those of you that prefer right triangles over unit circles, today is your day, okay? Everything we talked about unit circle base, looking at your X and Y coordinate, we're also gonna look at with a right triangle. So we're gonna talk about how to fill in a right triangle, how to find the sine, cosine, tangent, all the secant, cosecant, and cotangent based on that, and how to uh, apply your special right triangles, 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90, and then there's word problems in this section, okay? So, SOHCAHTOA, okay, it's so funny, this is like an acronym that's not in most math books, and like, if you ask an adult, somebody like, I don't even know how, how, however long they've been out of school, if they remember a word that helps them with trig, maybe not the word trig, something with a right triangle, maybe trig throws them off, half of them could tell you SOHCAHTOA, okay, you can't survive trig without SOHCAHTOA, the hardest part is learning how to spell it, right, so it's S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A, -H -H and it's an acronym, so the first letter, the S, stands for sign, and the sine is the ratio of the opposite sine to the hypotenuse. So this is opposite over hypotenuse. And then the second trig function is C for cosine, and it stands for adjacent over hypotenuse. And the third trig function starts with a T that's tangent and it's equal to opposite over adjacent. And then you're gonna get the trig functions that are the reciprocals of these. So if I asked you for cosecant, I just flip the sign. So I can either find the sign and then flip it or I can do hypotenuse over opposite. The, trig fu the, op the reciprocal of cosine would be secant, so I can either find the cosine and then flip it, or I can go straight to hypotenuse over adjacent. And then the cotangent would be the reciprocal to tangent. Again, you can find the tangent and then flip it, or you can go straight to the reciprocal, which is adjacent over opposite. questions so far all right so now think about there's two ways to apply this first is a just a general triangle outside of your circle and the second is to the triangle that we form inside the unit circle so this is where the overlap happens on the left let's just say I have my sides right opposite the a is lowercase a opposite the b is lowercase b and opposite angle c is lowercase c how do I know where the hypotenuse is? Longest part. Good, longest part, or relative to the angles? Outside. Opposite the right angle, okay? Sometimes they'll look kind of close, so just be careful. So the sine of theta, and theta is in this corner where A is, would be opposite, which is A, over hypotenuse, which is C. Cosine is adjacent, which is the one next to the A, over the hypotenuse, which is C. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, A over B. And then cosecant, I flip sine, so it's C over A. Secant, I flip cosine, which is C over B. And cotangent, I flip tangent, which is A over B. So when flipped, B over A. This says trigonometry values for a given angle are always the same no matter how large the triangle is. So it doesn't matter if I have a teeny tiny 30-60-90 triangle or a big huge 30-60-90 triangle. The ratio of the sides is the same. These are similar, called, if you remember geometry, it's called similar triangles. If you have two angles that are the same, the triangles are similar, which means everything is proportional. Okay, So it doesn't matter if I have something that's super small like this or super big like this the ratio of their sides is always as long as the angles are the same 
is always going to reduce to be the same thing, which means every 30, 60, 90 triangle will have the same ratio of sides. Every 45, 45, 90 angle will have the same ratio of sides. Example one says, find the value of each of the six trig functions of theta if b is four and c is two root five. So in order to get all six, you need one other piece of information. What is that? A, how do you find the missing side of a right triangle? Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. What, does it matter which one's a and b? A and B don't matter, right? But C has to be the hypotenuse. So A squared plus four squared would equal two root five squared. A squared plus 16 equals two root five squared is two times two, and then root five times root five, or four times five, which is 20. Subtract the 16 and the square root. And there's no such thing as plus or minus here because we're talking about a right triangle and the measure of the sides would have to be positive. When we put this in a circle, we'll talk about the other way. But for right now, you want those sides to be positive. Okay, so now I've got all three side lengths. You with me? Yep, okay, so sine of theta, cosine of theta, tangent of theta, cosecant of theta, secant, of theta and cotangent of theta. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse or two, and we're talking about theta, which again is in that corner, but just make sure you pay attention because sometimes it can be, it can move. Two over two root five. What happens to this ratio? You can reduce it and it has to be rationalized, right? So the twos cancel, I get one over root five, and then I gotta rationalize that, multiply by root five and root five and I get root five over five. Cosine is adjacent, which is four, over hypotenuse, which is two root five. Can be reduced to two over root five, which gets rationalized as two root five over five. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, two over four, which is one half. We good so far? Okay, then when I go to find the remaining ones, what you wanna do is, we're flipping the reciprocals of what we had, but my suggestion is flip it before you rationalize it. So if you rationalize it, don't take this answer, flip it, and then have to re-rationalize something you already rationalized. So go to before you rationalize it, which is here, and flip it. Yep. Where are the terms in the opposite over adjacent? Mm-hmm. Like no, opposite. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, you go. So I'm going to flip. I'm going to flip again. Before I rationalize, 1 over root 5 flipped is just root 5. Flip here before I rationalize. 2 over root 5 becomes root 5 over 2. And then flip the tangent, and I get 2. So again, save yourself the time. If you had to rationalize to get your initial trig functions, then flip before you rationalize to get your reciprocal functions. Everybody good? Yeah. All right, so now think about how this overlaps with your 30, 60, 90, and your 45, 45, 90 triangle. If your unit is one, Okay, if you actually just think about your general 45, this would be A, this would be A, this would be A root two. That's the ratio of any 45, 45, 90 triangle, okay? But if I now make my radius one, then those A's become one, 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 and then the hypotenuse would be root two. For the 30, 60, 90 triangle, the original ratio is A, A root three and two A. But if I put this in my circle, I make the radius one, or the A one, sorry, which makes it one, root three, and two. Now let's say we fill in all of our special triangles or special angles all the way around my unit circle using the triangle instead of the point, okay? 
So if I were to use this to fill in my 45s, let's say. The sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, right? So the sine here of 45 would be one over root two, which get rational, gets rationalized to root two over two. The cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which would be one over root two, which gets rationalized to root two over two. And the tangent is one over one, which is just one. Matches what we get for the sine and cosine of our point, right, at 45. All of our over fours. If I do the same thing with 30 degrees, so now I'm coming over here to 30 degrees. If I want to do sine, it's opposite over hypotenuse, that's one half. If I want to do cosine, it's adjacent over hypotenuse, which is root three over two. And if I want to do tangent, it's opposite over adjacent, which is one over root three, and that gets rationalized to root three over three. So if you prefer your right triangles over your unit circle points, feel free, okay? Tangent is usually faster with the right triangle than it is that putting y over x. But if you can memorize your unit circle points, it will be faster to get the sine and cosine the other way. So I don't care which way you use it. Um, if, you, if you just make sure that you know how to apply a 30, 60, 90 triangle in each quadrant or a 45, 45, 90 triangle in each quadrant. But they are both the same. All right, so given that, find the cosecant of 30 degrees, the secant of 30 degrees, and the cotangent of 30 degrees. But use your right triangle. Don't use your unit circle. So what did we say is opposite the 30 degrees in a 30, 60, 90 triangle? What number? It's one, it's the smallest one. One. Opposite the 60 is root three and opposite the 90 is two, okay? It goes in order of smallest angle, right? Smallest would be one, next would be root three because that's 1.4, and then the largest would be two. That's 1.7, yeah, it's 1.7, something like that. So opposite the 30 goes the one, opposite the 60 goes the root three, opposite the 90 goes the two. So if cosecant is the reciprocal of sine and sine is opposite over hypotenuse, then cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite, which is two over one or two. Because we're referencing theta is this angle here. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm looking at hypotenuse over adjacent or two over root three, which rationalizes to two root three over three. And cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, which is opposite over adjacent. So I'm looking at adjacent over opposite. Adjacent is root three over one, and it's root three. You find the 60s. So what's the cosecant of 60 degrees, the secant of 60 degrees, and the cotangent of 60 degrees? Okay, so now we're referencing 60 degrees, which is in the top corner. So the cosecant is again, hypotenuse over opposite. Hypotenuse is two, opposite is root three. This is two root three over three. And then secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So hypotenuse is two, adjacent to 60 degrees is one. This is two. And then cotangent is adjacent over opposite, which is one over root three root three over one, or sorry, root three over three, once you rationalize. Good so far. <clears throat> All right, now we're gonna use the calculator. So use the calculator to evaluate the function around your answer four decimal places. So again, you wanna get good at flipping back and forth, and this one even brings back in your degree minute second notation, okay? So I'm gonna add to this, 12 minutes just so that you're used to doing the minutes too because you're gonna need to do them all, okay? So let the calculator do the work. A would have to be in what mode? Degrees and it's cosecant. So this is one over sine of 35 degrees, which is 1.7434. Degrees. 
Yes. Secant, this, what mode is this? What is 83 degrees, 15 minutes, 12 seconds in? Is that in degrees or radians? It's still in degrees, right? Okay. So I'm going to do one over the cosine of this thing. Okay. And remember, you type one divided by... I'm gonna, how do you do the minute? I'm gonna, yeah, I'll show you. Okay, so first thing, again, you want to make sure that's in degrees, and then it's 1 divided by 83, or sorry, cosine 83. Go to second, apps, get your angle menu. The first one's your degrees. 15 second apps. Second one is your minutes. And then 12 seconds, remember, it's not in that same menu. It's above your plus symbol. And you have to hit alpha. So alpha and it gives you the two tick marks and you hit enter. And that's 8.5121. The last one we're back to radians, right? So go to your mode menu, switch from degrees to radians and it's one over the tangent, pi over seven. Don't use 3.14, keep it exact, keep it the pi button. So 2.0765. Those should be easy questions. They will be super confusing if you come in with a calculator you've never used before and you're trying to figure out where the degree minute second notation all that is. Remember, if you can't figure it out, you divide the 15 by 60 and the 12 by 3600 and you could figure it out that way. Okay, but you also have to be familiar with switching back and forth from degrees to radians. So make sure you're comfortable with your calculator. Will we have the assignment? You'll have the graphing this time. Yeah, and I'll split it out. Okay, so co-functions are functions that have a relationship with each other based on their acute angle. So the value of a trig function of theta is equal to the co-function of the complement of theta. What does complement mean? Equal to, equal to 90 degrees. So what this is saying is if I had a right triangle, and actually let me review some of your triples, okay? There are a bunch of right triangle triples that help, or Pythagorean triples that you can use to save some time. One is the three, four, five triangle. Okay, so this is three, this is four, this is five. So three, four, five is a Pythagorean triple, which means if you have the three and the four, you're missing the hypotenuse, you can automatically fill it in as five. The other one is six, eight, 10. So if you double those three. Another one would be five, 12, 13. Uh, seven, 24, 25, those are probably the most commonly used ones. There's other ones like 8, 15, 17. But those are the most commonly ones, commonly used ones. So if I knew that this was my right triangle and I said that this angle was, let's just say this is 40 degrees, this is 50 degrees. I'm not saying these are the right values. I'm just saying to set up a relationship, okay? And I asked you for the sine of 40 degrees. You tell me it's what? It's four over five, okay? What's the complement to the 40 degrees? 50 degrees, right? So in the top, it's telling you that the co-function to sine is cosine, which means if I found the cosine of the complement, cosine of 50 degrees is what? Four over five, those are the same, okay? So sine and cosine are co-functions. If I find the sine of one of them and the cosine of the other of the complement, they'll be the same. Same is true the other way around. So the cosine of 40, which is 3 over 5, would equal the sine of 50, 3 over 5. And then tangent and cotangent are co-functions because the tangent of 40 opposite over hypotenuse, I mean opposite over adjacent would be 3 over 4 and the cotangent of 50 would be adjacent over opposite which is 4 over 3. So cofunctions, one part is the complement. So if I had, if I didn't know the angle it would be theta, theta 
and the complement would be 90 minus theta. The other part is the relationship. So sine goes with cosine, tangent goes with, co with cotangent, and secant goes with cosecant. These are not reciprocal functions. These are co-functions. So the sine of one angle is equal to the cosine of its complement. The tangent of an angle is equal to the cotangent of its complement, and the secant of one angle is equal to the cosecant of its complement. So a lot of times you won't even see these with values. You'll just see theta in there. And you would have to know, especially when we get to verifying trig identities, to replace one with the other. Most of the time, you'll see it in radians, like pi over 2, but not always. Sometimes you'll see it in degrees like 90 minus theta. Sometimes you'll see it in radians like pi over 2 minus theta. It's the same thing. So this says find a co-function with the same value as the given expression. I'm not asking for the value of cosine of 20. I'm asking for what angle and co-function would give you the same value. So what partners cosine with co-function? Sine. And the complement of 20 is what? 70 degrees. So you don't have to do it, but if you had actually typed those two in the calculator, you should get the same answer. Does that make sense? All right, so then cotangent goes with what co-function? Tangent and the complement to 40 is 50. 50. Easy stuff, you just got to know what it is. All right, now we're going to go back to the triangle. So use the given function values and the trig identities to find the indicated trigonometric functions. It gives you cosecant of theta and secant of theta. When Are these right triangle base? Is there a three in my, I mean, unit circle base? Is there a three on my unit circle? No. no. So that tells you draw a triangle. So I'm going to draw a right triangle. I'm going to put theta in a corner. It doesn't matter which one. Just make sure you're consistent. And then use the first thing they give you to start your triangle. So cosecant is what is the ratio of what two sides? I, I so Good. So sine would be opposite over hypotenuse, which means cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. So it's telling you that the hypotenuse over the opposite side is 3, which would be 3 over 1. So um, hypotenuse is 3, opposite side is 1. You good? Okay. So I have two choices here. One is Pythagorean theorem. Yes. Second is dissect secant. Okay. They give you the secant, and the secant is adjacent hypotenuse over adjacent but it's telling you hypotenuse would be 3 root 2 why do you think that's happening there was a rationalization going on so it's easier to use the Pythagorean theorem okay but confirm it with your second part so Pythagorean theorem this could be the x that that's the sign I'm missing so x squared plus 1 squared equals 3 squared x squared plus 1 equals 9 x squared equals 8 x would equal the square root of 8 which is 2 times 4, 2 times 2, or 2 root 2. Now confirm your secant with it. So if the secant was hypotenuse over adjacent, it would have been 3 over 2 root 2. And just like we suspected, that has to get rationalized. It would be 3 root 2 over 4. Because 2 root 2 times root 2 is 4. Does that make sense? All right, so now i got to fill in the rest of it. So the sine of theta, we put theta here, is 1 over 3. The cosine of theta is 2 root 2 over 3. The tangent of theta is 1 over 2 root 2. And I've got to rationalize that. The root, the 2 is fine. It's the root 2 i got to multiply by. So root 2 over 2 times root 2 times root 2 is 4. And then the secant of 90 minus theta, here's our cofunction. So what matches secant in cofunction? Cosecant. And the complement to 90 minus theta would be what? Theta plus just, right, or just theta, right? So the cosecant is 3. That's the one they started with. Yep. So if you didn't know what you were doing, Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can flip them. And, and like I said, today we're saying first quadrant, but eventually we're going to move around the circle and you're going to get some additional information and then that's what you're going to do with that stuff. Can you turn the 90 minus theta into theta? 
know the complement to 90 minus theta. So, the, so if 90 minus theta is my angle, right, and I normally get the complement by doing 90 minus that, 90 minus 90 plus theta, these cancel, and the complement to 90 minus theta is just theta. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. You just don't have to go through all that work. Is 90 here? For the, for the, because that's a co-function. So I don't know what theta is. So this is written in terms of co-function. Go back to your co-functions on that last slide, and you're going to see that secant of 90 minus theta equals cosecant of theta. So you're replacing that whole thing with it. Okay, so these should go back to like geometry, right? A bunch of right triangle trig problems in geometry. These are probably the most applicable to your real life, okay? So this says find the exact values of the indicated variable, okay? In the right corner, I've got 32 degrees, and then I've got a right triangle, and then I've got opposite the 32 degrees is 7.8. I don't know the X, you're welcome, and I don't know the Y. So what you have to do with these is set up the relationship first. So pick the angle, obviously, you, you need to know two of the three parts of your trig function, okay? So I know that I'm given 32 degrees, I'm gonna use that one. I know I have 7.8, so I'm gonna use that as part of it. But if I wanted to find X, I gotta figure out if I'm given 7.8 and X, what two sides in respect to 32 are those? Where's 7.8 in respect to 32? Opposite, where's X in respect to that triangle? Hypotenuse, so what trig function is opposite hypotenuse? Sine, so I'm gonna use the sine of 32 degrees equals opposite, which is 7.8, over hypotenuse, which is X. Sure, the only, the only thing I would say, try to avoid that, is you guys are so smart, you try to do things like that without a calculator in your head, and then you get something like 48, and you've got the whole thing wrong. So the question was, couldn't you just say that this top angle is 58? And yes, you can, okay? But just be really careful. It's always best to stick with the information they give you, because at least you know it's right. All right, so now I want to solve for x, so I can multiply by x on both sides of my equation, the x times sine of 32 equals 7.8, these cancel, and then divide both sides by the sine of 32. And I get x equals my calculators in degrees. Why do you sine? Because the two, so I have to use the 7.8, right? It's the only piece of information they gave me, which is opposite 32. And then this time I'm solving for x. I'm gonna switch and solve for y in a minute, but I'm solving for x. So in respect to 32, 7.8 is opposite, and the x is the hypotenuse, which tells you to use sine. Do you round to a certain decimal? Yeah, um, I think these usually say nearest tenth, if you want to kind of make a habit of it. Okay, so 7.8 divided by sine of 32, you got 14.7, right? Yeah. 14.7, 14.71. All right, now I want to solve for y, okay? I've got options. What's one option? It has, this is in degrees. You see that little 32 degrees? Pay attention to what that angle says because sometimes that angle would say pi over 7. And now you know it has to be in radians. Yep. So what are the options? You could do the Pythagorean theorem. I could use the tangent. Okay. I could even use opposite and, hypo, I mean, uh, opposite and adjacent, right? So opposite and adjacent is tangent. I could use opposite. No. I could use adjacent and hypotenuse because I found the x. So what's the advantage of doing one over the other? Anybody ever made a mistake on a test that was a stupid mistake? And you got 14.7 wrong and now you're gonna use 14.7? Are you gonna get the Y wrong too? Yep. yep, don't do that. Stick to the information they gave you. So the only thing that we're sure of is this is 32, this is 7.8, and this is Y. That's opposite and adjacent, so that's tangent. So tangent of 32 degrees equals 7.8 over y. Go through the steps again, and I'll tell you the shortcut is if the number's in the, in the top, you're gonna divide, and if the number's in the bottom, you're gonna multiply. So in the top, I would take this and divide it by that. And if the number was in the bottom, I'd just multiply by it. So 7.8 divided by the tangent of 32. Say again. 
if the number's in the bottom of the fraction. So if I got tangent of 30, if I had set it up and it was tangent of 32 equals y over 7.8, then I'd multiply by the denominator. But if the number's in the top, the shortcut is take that and divide it by the other side. So you can use Pythagorean theorem to check your answers. That's obviously a good use of it, okay? But just be careful. If you're going to use a number that you found, realize that if you made a mistake first round, you're gonna make the mistake again. Yep. When you do the, if you do the Pythagorean theorem, do you get like 7.8? So it could be a little bit off because we rounded, but it should be close. Okay. Yeah, so if you did the Pythagorean theorem, I mean, and you have a calculator on something like this, so it should be easy to check. 7.8 squared plus, we're saying 12.5 squared equals 14.7 squared, okay? If I did 7.8 squared plus 12.5 squared, I get 1217.09 and 14.7 squared is 1216.09. So it's rounded, which means it's not gonna be exact, but it should be pretty close. All right, so when you get into the word problems, okay, you're gonna have to set up your triangle sometimes. Sometimes it's gonna be set up for you, sometimes you're gonna have to set it up yourself. So a couple of things, again, this should be a review from geometry, but there's something called an angle of elevation and an angle of depression. And I would say most common mistake is on the angle of depression. So angle of elevation is from that level up. Whether you're on the ground and you're looking up at something or you're standing, in this case, this person's standing on a balcony and they're looking up at something, from their eye level, so this little guy's eye level up, is the angle of elevation. So eye level up, angle of elevation, okay? Elevation would be like rising, right? So it's higher than you. Angle of depression is eye level down. So a lot of people put the angle here when it's angle of depression. That's wrong, okay? So angle of depression is eye level down. So they could be doing something like this, looking you know, out on a balcony. You want to measure from the angle straight out down. Or they're looking on the edge of a cliff, and they're looking down at something in a valley. That's eye level down. Okay, If they're in an airplane and they're sighting something, it's always eye level down. So be careful with your angle of depression. So whether it's an angle of depression or angle of elevation, there's going to be some way to make a right triangle. And then from there, there's gonna be some piece of information you have. You're gonna get given two of those three pieces or a way to find two of those three pieces. And you've gotta figure out what they're asking for and then set up your right triangle and solve it. All right, so we're just gonna set these up for now. Okay, this is a, an irregular blue shape is a pond. The distance across the pond A is unknown. To find this distance, a surveyor took the measurement shown in the figure and what's the distance across the pond? So this is literally drawn for you, right? I've got my 24 degrees here. I don't know A, but I do know the adjacent side to 24 is 125 feet. Which trig function are you gonna use? Tangent, so the tangent of 24 degrees is A over 125. And again, number in the bottom, all you gotta do is multiply. So 125 times the tangent of 24 degrees. So the homework will ask you, I think there's one question that actually says like create a trig statement that helps you solve it. That's what that would be. And then again, you wanna make sure you're in degrees. It's 55.6, yep. And this time it's in feet. Last one, a building is 21 meters high and it casts a shadow 25 meters long. Find the angle of elevation of the sun to the nearest degree. This time you're given the side lengths and you're missing the angle, okay? So if you look at the drawing, in respect to this angle, what would be 21? Opposite, Opposite 25? Adjacent. So my trig statement is the tangent of theta equals 21 over 25. How do I solve that? Good, so remember the little button above your trig functions are called inverse functions, right? So if you're given the ratio, like in this case, and you need to find the, the angle, then you do tan negative one of 21 over five. So I would do second tangent 21 divided by 25, enter, and I get theta equals 40.0. Yeah, yeah, do nearest, oh, nearest degree, so 40 degrees. So 
if you're looking for a measurement, you're using the regular sine, cosine, and tangent button. If you're looking for the angle, then you're doing the negative ones. So sine negative one, tangent negative one, cosine negative one. Questions? 